Yeah, this is the time that uh, we can pause and we can enjoy the Sabbath that is given to us by God, a day that was given to man. And so we would like to invite you to sing with us for our song service. Hymn number 383, O Day of Rest and Gladness. Next song will be Amazing Grace, hymn number 108.
to welcome. Okay. For our opening song, it will be six five two. Love at home. We would like to request everyone to please stand. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are so glad that uh, you invite us to come to your house of prayer after the week of activities, Lord. And uh, the blessing is that the hours of the Sabbath have come already, and we we praise your name, Lord, for your cares during the week. But now let us focus on you and you alone. So may your presence be with us here. Bless uh, uh, our preacher tonight, Lord, and, and may your words be, be on him uh, so we can uh, understand, Lord, what is the message that, that you have for each one of us tonight. Please forgive our trespasses against you, Lord, against our fellow men. And Father, uh, receive this vesper because it's for your honor and your glory and for our spiritual nourishment as well. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you, Lord, for being with us here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
Yeah. Happy Vesper. Yeah. Happy Vesper. Um, in behalf of the music ministry, I would like to welcome each and every one of you for coming tonight. And to our online viewers, warmest welcome to all of you. Um, how was your week? Good. Good, busy. Uh, I would like to share mine before I actually like introduce um, or like, you know, I've been tasked to do the presidering. I don't know how to, like, you know, uh, Kuya said, I would just need to welcome and then do, uh, just announce who's coming next. But before that, I would just like to share um, that this week is, even if it's so busy for me, but I am also like, really happy this week because I have proved that our God is a loving God and always responds. Yes. Um, yeah. Just a uh, I just want to share like uh, this. Uh, I actually started online classes. I've taken some courses and then um, one of the things that I was worried about is that how can I find time to actually do the assignment because even without my classes, I'm still like really, really busy. I'm still sleeping late at night. But one of the things that I really asked God was, Lord, you protect my Sabbath. Because I know that uh, with if things get really busy, it's always your weekend that will always get hit. Your Sabbath and then your, your, your Friday night and your Saturday and your Sunday. But you know, God is so good. I've been able to finish my assignment by Thursday. And so Friday, I'm really like free. It's been a struggle every week, but three weeks now, I'm always able to finish my assignment by, by, by Thursday. And God is so good because I don't know where I got all that time because I never had the time in the first place, but God is so good. So I just want to encourage all of you again. I know that you are you also know this, but sometimes it's also nice to like hear all these um, like you know, really just small things, like you know, everyday things, but God doesn't forget all our small things. He always like you know, from the big to the small things in our life, he's really interested. So yeah, so that's my <laughs> my small sharing. And uh, our program tonight will be um will be we will have a speaker and our speaker is no other than uh our uh, very active elder um who's always like you know the earliest who's coming here every the elder who's i think is always present here aside from brother amado and uh, brother Dan, <laughs> but he's always here and if you don't have anything to present, he will also do special pray, special song. He can also do. Uh, he's very, very flexible. He can be an everywhere, like you know, anything he can do. Uh, uh, Kuya will always, will always, uh, like you know, volunteer to do that. And so, um, thank you, uh, Ati Phoebe, for the praise team, and uh, thank you also, AJ and also Brother Amado, and now our Joanne and Shella. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now, I don't know what uh, the title of yours. Uh, secret. It's secret. <laughs> <laughs> now we would like to welcome our speaker for tonight, Kuya Leon Desa. Good evening and uh, happy Vesper or happy Sabbath. Uh, despite the uh, rain, uh, we are thankful for God that we are gathered this evening to worship Him in uh, this wonderful house of worship, our beloved uh, main church. And uh, once again, I'm so glad to, uh, that I was invited to speak again.
And I'm also grateful that my brother is here. Yeah. You know? Amen. Thank you, bro, for coming uh, to make the effort, the time. And when I see you here, you know, they always make me nervous. <laughs> okay, so uh, our presider was asking me if uh, what's the title of my uh, message this evening, and I said it's a secret. Pan with the bro. F5. F5. See, that's the problem when you're not really uh, familiar with uh, high tech. There you go. That's why I call the secret because uh, our uh, message this evening is about the secret of a happy home. Right? So, um, once again, I'll say uh, good evening, my brother, uh, my beloved uh, brethren, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. So, how's your week? I know it's a busy week, but uh, thank God that we're here to observe Sabbath. So, if I may ask you today, how am I going to ask? How are you? Uh, uh, the, the person whom I can ask is not here. Oh, he said, how are you, Brother Roger? <laughs> Wait. How's your wife? <laughs> or, uh, Atifeli, how are you? Excellent. Uh, how's your husband? Oh, he's here? Oh, good. <laughs> By the way, how are the kids? Are they fine? Well, you know, what could be your possible answer? So, um, it's all up to you. Or maybe your family is faithfully intact in the Lord. That is why you can say, all is well or we are all fine thank you i would like to praise the lord for that brother my sister or probably a son or a daughter has wandered away from god and i feel sad for such a situation i can understand if you hesitate to give me a positive reply if I ask, how are you, my brother? How are you, my dear sister? Or maybe a husband or a wife that no longer feels the warmth of each other's closeness. Because if there's no more closeness, you know, love lies out of the window. So tonight, let us again discover together the secrets of a happy home from God's holy word. And in order to let that fire of love glow again as ever, and if we try to take a look at the family relationship situation here in North America, it would look like this.
That's a, a picture of a husband and wife. And this guy, I uh, don't you know, is making an argument or a big discussion. There's no sound, but you can tell that they are arguing. Right? So, as you can see on this chart, right, in the 1900s, there is one divorce for every 12 marriages. And every broken family were devastated as the rest felt terrible for such an untoward event. But as time moves on, on the statistics, it is swiftly growing worse. Just before, before the turn of the century in 1995, there is a 50-50 chance that marriage will end in divorce. And at the start of this millennium, the year 2000, there is one divorce. If you look at there, there is one divorce, but no marriages. That's kind of funny. How can you have a divorce when there's no one getting married? Right? Now it seems that the world has trashed the sacred institution of marriage into mockery. And we have forgotten that God is in control of our marriage relationship. And it is no secret, my brothers and sisters, that the enemy's first line of attack is the family. Because when the family is ruined, everything else crumbles beyond repair. You agree? But there is hope, brothers and sisters. Tonight, we will start studying again the secret of a happy home. I call it a secret, not because it is difficult to find. Wisdom always shouts in the marketplace or in the public places. Just like as what the Bible says. But the problem is, people choose to ignore it. In the Bible, there is a story of a mother whose beloved child suddenly got sick and died. I don't know if you have read that uh, story in the Bible. She was a woman who fears the Lord. So her first impulse was to turn to God for help. The prophet Elisha saw her coming from a distance, and the prophet could discern the urgency of her visit. So Elisha asked his servant to meet the woman on the road and instructed him how to greet her, which the servant obeyed. This is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 28. We will read that portion of the story together. But I want you to particularly notice how the woman replied when the servant greeted her. Even with uh, such a very heavy burden in her heart. Let us read 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 28. Please run now to meet her. So this is now Elisha instructing his servant. Now what happened? She came to see the prophet of the Lord. Huh? What happened? Uh, AJ, can you help me, please? Huh? 
My cursor is gone. I think it frozen, frozen. It is well, ah, so please run now to meet her and say to her, it is well with you. Is it, it is, well, is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. She came to see the prophet of the Lord with a heavy heart, grieving. But her reply is with unwavering confidence and solid trust to her Lord. And the Bible says, and she answered, it is well. So I may ask you, brothers and sisters, is your heart heavy with burden today? Is there a problem in the family? Have you been praying for so long for the, that son or for that daughter? Have you been struggling with God for your husband or your wife? Brothers and sisters, I want you to know my, that the God whom we serve is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Never failed to help you and me. His promises are sure. And you can expect that he hears you when you call. And you can say it with unswerving faith in your heart. It is well. Amen. Amen. There is no mountain so high that God cannot move it for you. If you are with the Lord. Amen. Amen. If he chooses not to move your mountain, he will lift up with his lift you up with his righteous right hand and you will soar on wings like eagles or you will run to overcome that mountain and you will not be weary or faint that is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 and Isaiah 40 31 amen okay our great God now, I want you to take note of these passages. I did the research and uh, just to make sure that this uh, topic of mine is found in the Bible. And I was amazed that there's a lot of passages that's pertaining to make a, hap a home a happy home, mm -hmm. as well as it worked for our marriages to be perfect. So take note. Our great God is asking you and me today, is there anything too hard for the Lord? That's in found in Jeremiah 32, 27. The Bible says, nothing is impossible with God. Luke 1, 37. God cares about you, my dear friend. You can cast all your cares on him, for he cares about you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Our God is an awesome God. By his grace, we can say with confidence, it is well. May his name be praised. Like the shepherd boy king says, in my time of trouble, he will hide me and set me up on a rock. Psalms 27, 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you promised that you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Isaiah 
In the book of Modern Medical Counselor, page 159 says, to live a peaceful life is one of the important goals that a man and a woman can achieve. This is the place where physical, mental, social, and spiritual health can be developed. Brothers and sisters, have you ever wondered why medical situation regarding mental health is so rampant nowadays? Well, a stressful life is a common cause of depression. And depression among kids are common due to, I guess you know it, broken homes. A peaceful life is ideal place for mental, social, physical development. And the mind is restless until it finds God. If you want peace of mind, brothers and sisters, seek God. He promised that he could be found, but do not delay. The Bible says, seek God while he may be found. There will be a time when you want to seek God, but could no longer be found. Don't ever let that time come in your life, my friend. Here is an outline of some of the secrets of a happy home as revealed by the scriptures, which we are going to study tonight, as long as we have enough time. You think so? Amen. I have researched some methods uh, for building a happy home. Number one, plan before getting married. <clears throat> Two, have a clear understanding of the goals or purpose of marriage. I dissected it into five categories here. The man should have a partner. B, to give happiness to spouse. C, to provide financial and economic security. D, to have children. E, to provide spiritual and cultural growth for family members. Uh, what number is that? Number three, having one's own home. Four, discover the skills and abilities of your spouse and collaborate to improve them. Five, plan to be together. Six, maintain yourself properly. Seven, address personal issues in private and pray. Amen. Eight, engage in open communication with each other. Nine, use the family's income wisely. Ten, show respect to each other. Eleven, express your love on every occasion. And twelve, uphold the family with the Lord. Oh, look at this guy. You know him? Thank you. See, methods for building a happy home. Number one, plan before getting married. Uh, do you think this guy planned before he got married? That's a big question. <laughs> According to Happiness for Husbands Last Wives, page 27, if you desire to have a beautiful and peaceful married life, it should be well planned and thought out for a long time. And the most satisfying way to plan is to have mental preparation. See, in my case, ain't gonna happen because I was so young and there was no mental preparation. Only physical preparation. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40 says, Let all things be done decently and in order. Very clear. So if you want to do it decently and in order, you have to plan it before entering to this situation. Amen. There's a saying that it's not getting married. It's not like uh, uh, eating, that if you don't like it, you just spit it out. That's your sacrificial move, right? Two, have a clear understanding of the goals of marriages, of marriage. See, for me, I don't have no goal. My only goal was to get this woman. I was attracted, and that's it. And thank God, uh, we survived. The man should have a partner. Right? That's why there's a woman. Because without a woman, the man is lonely. Right? That's why God gave the woman so that it says there the man should have a partner. In Genesis 2.18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. See? God made the woman as a helper, not as a slave. Helper is, you know, helping hand, right? If you maybe when you, when you prepare your meal, if you both helping out, it's faster. Not the, the wife cook the food and the guy is watching TV. That, that, you know, in most cases it's like that. That's why sometimes you end up in a big argument or something because uh, you're not treating your wife as a helper. You're treating her as a, uh, a slave or something. And it's comparable to the person, right? So nowadays, do you see that? What, what is comparable? It means that uh, he's, he or she is able to, to help you, right? Not uh, having a, a pet or something or a partner like that. So another purpose of marriage, give happiness. Amen. So, in Ecclesiastes 4.11 says, Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. Mm. But how can one be warm alone? But I talk to many people nowadays that they said, Well, I have electric blanket, I have a heater. <laughs> yes, it works when there is power. But you know, during stormy days, power, there's a power outage. So this, all these devices, all this material doesn't work. But if you have a comparable uh, partner, right? It will always keep you warm, not only your physical body, but also your heart, right? Keep you happy. So that is very clear. Oh, I like this. Family finance. Provide financial and economic security. If you look up closely, it's, I'm sorry, it's all in pesos. <laughs> but it's still money. If you live in the Philippines, you're still a rich person. But if you bring that to Canada, <laughs> I don't know. It's not really much money, right? But one, that's one purpose of, of, the, of marriage, right? Financial... Uh, by family finance. Oh, and here's the good one. Most effective medicine for wife's headache tested and approved by all laboratories worldwide. If you have tons of money, and if your wife got a headache, you have to uh, put those pile of money in, 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 his, in her forehead and everything is well. A uh, headache is gone because now she will go shopping and uh, you know, Tested and proven. You look at that. She pretends she's asleep, but she's smiling. Oh, the purpose of marriage, huh? 
preservation of the lineage. A home is not complete without children. But unfortunately, not everyone is blessed with the children, you know, right? And you know that guy? You see that guy with a beautiful woman? Uh, according to Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7, and the New King James Version says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. So when you have children, this is what you're supposed to do. Teach them because as a family, the parents are the first teacher of the children. Amen. And Proverbs 22 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right? So, and I believe that. Because before, when my dad says something, I try to listen, but then when he goes out, I just, that thing goes there and I still, still do my own thing. But now that I'm older, all the advice that I get from him is now here in my memory, in my head. And I have to teach my children the same way. <coughs> so if they don't listen, I don't get upset because I did it before. You know what I'm saying? Payback. It's a payback time. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 4 says, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So, everything that you say is according to what God wants you to be, to do, right? Not yelling and 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 and, and uh, calling yeah. demonio ka or, or, or whatever or aswang ka or you understand, brother Mado? You're a devil. You're a witch like that. <laughs> Is that good? So here is a picture provides spiritual and cultural growth for each family member. So I love this family. They are worshiping, see? Because if you do this, you worship God together with all, all the whole members of the family. And you know what the saying is? The family that prays together stays together. Here, another method for building a happy home. Number three, having one's own home. You see, this is always the problem. See, back in the Philippines, I guys still see a, a son or daughter who already have gray hair and everything with five or ten kids and still live at home. Still live with the parents, right? But it clearly says here, having one's own home. See, in Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and for and be adjoined to his wife and they shall become one flesh i know you know this this passage right it's hard to to live with the in-laws you know there's no peace and quiet in the home it's it's been proven so if you want a peace of mind, a, peace, a peaceful home, find a place where you don't live with your mother-in-law. Or, you know. I love my mother-in-law. Good for you, bro. <laughs> Discover the skills and abilities of your spouse and develop them. You see, even though they are not so wealthy, could see by the with the kitchen. This is back in the Philippines. But they have a keyboard. Keyboard. You know keyboard? So if your wife is uh, wanted to to play or practice musical instrument, like a piano, right? 
be it support support your partner why because if he's good in piano maybe we, we if we don't have a pianist here in church <laughs> she'll be able to uh, play for us mm -hmm. right that's what it says the ability of your spouse you know try to to uh, support so that it can be developed and and See, in Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Here's plan to be together. In the Philippines, it is easy to gather the family because the mom always stay at home. Only the father goes out to work, right? The breadwinner. But in Canada, very hard. You see, why? Because the dad works early morning. The kids the mom takes the kids to school. Then when the dad comes home, the mom goes to work. So the routine is like that. But for us Seventh-day Adventists or those people who believe in the Sabbath, it's a blessing. You see, that's why God's plan, see our family will come together again after the week of work when we observe Sabbath rest. Because this is God's plan for family. Amen? Because yeah. Sabbath is a happy day. Yeah. Number six, method of building a happy home. Maintain yourself properly. This is very important because you cannot help it. Everyone will get to that uh, certain age, you know, when we get older. So, if you know, when, before when you were younger, you were attracted to this woman, to this man, but if you know the outcome, like, if my wife probably know that I'm going to be bald, I don't think he's going <laughs> to accept me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But see, it doesn't matter even if what appearance you look like now, you know, but you maintain it. You know, you're still uh, like a, a macho, macho man. <laughs> I think uh, love is still there. The same thing with the woman, you know. You cannot blame the woman, your wife, that she has too many curvature. The figure, you know what I'm saying? It used to be the waist like that. Now everything is, is all uh, curved. I, I don't know what, how you call that, but you have to maintain yourself properly. Yeah. Right, Nani That's right. You know, like uh, for the husband, you have to put aside a budget so that your wife or your spouse will look beautiful. Right? Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's tight budget. Just put a budget. Okay? I'll give you an example, Nanay Sally. Yeah. Tell me if you believe this. There. <laughs> the husband gave a budget for makeup. Look at the lipstick. Um, <laughs> see? That's right. Nice. Nice. See, I'm not trying to tell you that I'm not lying, you know, right? See? Here, address personal issues in private and pray. So this is also one thing, right? If you have an argument, you know, try to be discreet, right? You go in your private room, discuss things, and make sure Make sure that you lower down your voice. See, only now that I learned 
<laughs> you know, that is why God is good. Because He gives you all this advice that these things that you are doing is not good. Thank God. Praise God that, you know. So that's why now, because I try to lower my tone. My, look at my wife. See? He's here to support me now. I know it's mine. Look at that. Yeah, see? And be thankful that, oh, we resolved this problem, you know, blah, blah, blah. You always have to thank God for all the blessings, for all the good things that he has done. Yeah. You know. And engage in open communication with each other. Amen. <laughs> See, if you're planning something, you have to let your partner know. Otherwise, you go ahead with the plan and she doesn't know, you know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> That's why it says here to uh, um, one of the method of building a happy home is engage in open communication with each other. According to uh, Paul H. Landis, making the most uh, in the book of making the most of the marriage, page fifteen, being together requires sharing of interests activities, goals, appreciation, and not fully trustingly communicating one spouse is one of the possible pitfalls in married life in today's modern world. So if you are not open and you don't discuss, right, maybe you end up in divorce, divorce separation, whatever, or fight, you know, outside the Colombo, you know, you cannot sleep. You sleep in the couch in Sardinia, Canada, because it's cold outside. Yeah, you know, use the family's income wisely. Did you see that picture? See, in the Philippines, easy because if you live in the province, right? There's plenty of land to plant vegetables and all that. And here in Canada, vegetable is so expensive. So, but even though, because we, here, we buy almost everything. So what it says is that you, we need to do a budget accordingly, right? You don't use your money on something that is not really needed. Here, show respect to each other. You see that? If you show respect to each other, that's the outcome. You see the the wife wear 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 a shirt, love, 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 love. See, there's always love, love. You see? Look at the guy. The guy is so happy. Oh here, eleven. Express your love on every occasion. Yes. You see? But Try to create an occasion even when there is none. You don't wait for Valentine's Day or Christmas Day or what. Even there is no occasion, you just create one. This will make your wife happy. Amen. So every day you make an occasion. Okay? Trust me. Ah, just give an occasion. According to, uh, so express your love on every occasion. According to the reflection of love in marriage, page 12, love is an experience of intellectual and emotional delight. It is a spiritual inheritance as well as a biological hunger. Love is a plant with a heavenly beginning. It has reason. It is not blind. It is pure and sacred. So our topic this evening is very interesting. You know, so uh, I think I would leave you with this message. The method for building a happy home, number 12. Uphold the family with the Lord. 
Because when Jesus is in the family, happy, happy home. In Psalms 127, verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Amen? Amen. I would like to invite each one to please rise and I say this prayer. tonight that in every moment may God's love endure and in Jesus may we flourish have faith hold on to him at all times and when he comes may each of us welcome God with open arms this is my prayer in Jesus name amen Thank you for that rich admonition, a message that we need to hear every now and then, so that it will not become a secret, but rather it become a regular uh, principle that we will uphold and we will raise our family till Jesus comes. And so in response to that beautiful message, Happy home, about happy home. Let us all stand and sing six, five, Happy five, the five. Home, 655. Let's bow our heads to pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that you have shared to us this evening through your servant, Elder Leon. We pray that you'll fill us with our, your grace on things that we lack, 
and give us your strength that so that we'll be a better parent to our children, a better spouse to our maids. And we pray, Lord, that your blessings be upon us tonight as we depart from this, this place. May you keep us safe as we uh, go back home and bring us safely tomorrow to worship you again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.